everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Hey, did you know that you can use heat transfer vinyl on cardstock? Well, today I'm going to show you how it's done. We're going to start off with an image that I downloaded from the internet. I believe this came from Creative Fabrica. It's where I get 99% of my images from. I will do my best to locate where this is and I will put a link in the description below and in the corresponding blog post but we're going to be using this image for cardstock I have a scrap piece of white 110 pound recollections cardstock from Michaels we're going to be using a scrap piece of black Caesar easy weed heat transfer vinyl with the heat transfer vinyl, we're also going to be using the Cricut Explore Air 2, a standard grip cutting mat. I'll be using my Cricut mini heat press, my pin pen weeding tool. I love this little guy. And the easy press mat. Um, because I'm not sure what color I want to make my flower, I do have my Copic color tags out. So I'm going to be thinking about that and choosing a color. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into Cricut Design Space and do a few edits. So I'll meet you over there. Okay, so we are in Cricut Design Space. I already have my image uploaded. So I will hit Upload, Open Uploaded Images. I will choose my flower, add it to the canvas, and then we'll view the canvas. Now, in order to cut an outline and a base image, we're going to need to use the contour function. But as you can see down here, that is not an option at this time. There are two ways that we can adjust the image so that we can use the contour. The first way is we can duplicate the image. And then we'll go ahead and align center. And then we'll come back to actions, combine, and weld. Now, when we weld it, we now have the option to use the contour button, as you can see. Another way we can do this, and what we're going to do today is in the middle of my design, I have this little cutout that I need to get rid of. It will not enhance the design. In fact, when we shrink the image down to go onto a card, it will probably just cut wrong on the vinyl. So we'll go ahead and bring up a simple shape. We'll do a circle. We'll hit edit. We'll bring this down to 0.25. And then we will bring this over. We'll cover that little spot. And then we'll highlight everything. We will come to combine and we will weld it. So now our, oops, now our little spot is gone and our contour tour tool is back. So we'll go ahead and hit that. We will go up to hide all. And then we'll click done. Now that accomplished what we needed. However, now we don't have the outline. So let's go ahead and undo that. Click on this, duplicate it, get that one out of the way. Click this again, contour, hide all, and done. Now we'll go ahead and come over to edit. We'll change the color, hit apply. Align them in the center. And then I'm going to open up my layers panel. And I'm just going to go ahead and group them. 
So now I can just move this as, as one. So you may notice that this is huge. It is way too big to fit on a card. So in order to see how large we want it, I'm going to go ahead and make a card front so I can gauge how large I want to make this. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock that. I'm going to make this four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. I will lighten the color just so it's easier for me to see. And now we can start shrinking our flower until it fits our card. So let's go ahead and zoom in here some more. We will click edit, arrange that to the front. Okay, so this says that our design is 4.39 inches tall by 2.18 inches wide. Let's go ahead and just see what it looks like if it's four and a half inches tall. Yep, I think I like that. It'll be a nice statement piece on our card. So we'll go ahead and delete that. We no longer need it. I will ungroup that just to make it easier. I will hide my layers panel. And then we have our two pieces. So we'll go up to make it. And let's go ahead and save our project. Call it the daisy card. And I will save it to the cloud. Okay, so we have our daisy card saved. So let's go ahead and click make it. We're going to be working on a 12 by 12 mat. Because we're working with two separate materials, we do need two cutting mats. However, we need to make sure to go in and mirror both images because we are working with heat transfer vinyl. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll click next. Select our accessory, which is our Cricut Explore Air 2. Let's go ahead and work with mat number one, which is going to be our iron-on. I will choose everyday iron-on. And the pressure will, <clears throat> excuse me, the pressure will be default. And I'll go ahead and load my mat. And then for our second mat, we're going to need cardstock for intricate cuts. Pressure default. Okay, so we have both of our images cut out. So let's go ahead and start weeding. I am going to first get rid of this outside layer. Now what I should have done was I should have cut a weeding box around this. Um, I am wasting quite a bit, but we'll just go with it for today. Oops. Oh, this is turning into a hot mess today. <laughs> All right, so there's the outside. Now let's go ahead and weed out the inside. I absolutely love using Caesar Easy Weed. It is my favorite heat transfer vinyl. It works so well. And as the name implies, it weeds so e easily. So I'll go ahead and speed right through this part for you. Alright, I have my designs weeded out. You may notice 
that I no longer have the little centered dots in the vinyl. If I would have cut the image this size, they probably would have cut out just fine. But this was a really small image and more of the dots came up with the vinyl as I was weeding. So I just executive decision and got rid of them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and color our base image. I have chosen for the flower RV63 and RV66. For the leaves, I'm going to be using G24 and G28. And then for the center of the flower, I'm going to be using E19. Now what I would normally do in Copic coloring is I would color the base color and then I would add in the darker colors. But I'm going to wait and do the darker colors for the leaves and the petals after we're done transferring the or putting the heat transfer vinyl on. So, okay, so, <laughs> all right, I'm going to have to be really cautious that I don't get this color, the RV63, in the center of my flower. So I'm just going to hope for the best. So I'm basically just going to do the outside petals. I didn't think about that when I chose this design, but that is okay. So we will just do the flower petals and the leaves. And then the center stem I will, or the center of the flower I'll do after I put the, after I put the vinyl on. So everything's going to be fine. And I don't have to worry about the stem because that will be completely covered. So we'll just do a quick swipe of the green. And that was probably the fastest Copic coloring I've ever done. So we're done with the light green. We will put the RV63 to the side because we will need that again. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in and turn on my Cricut Mini Easy Press. So I will turn that on to the first heat setting and we will let that go. I will get rid of this, bring in my Easy Press mat. And even though I'm working with alcohol markers, I'm still going to heat this up before I try and put my vinyl on it. Um, I'm also going to get out a small piece of parchment paper. We'll cut this transfer sheet down just a little bit. It's a little large for what we need. All right, it just beeped at me, so it is ready. I'm going to go ahead and put my flower between the parchment paper. And I'm just going to give this a couple passes just to make sure that ink is completely dry. And now I'm going to carefully line up my vinyl onto the flower and my head will be in the way so I do apologize for that. Now it may not be completely perfect and that is okay. So we'll go ahead and put that on there. We will close this down and just run this over just a couple of passes. It does not take the heat transfer vinyl long to adhere to the cardstock, but we will definitely let this cool before we try and try and peel it off. All right, now let's, oh, nope, 
didn't work. Okay, so put it back under and we will press it just a little bit more. So we'll cool that down. Okay, and then we will peel this right up. Oh, nope. Not quite up there. And that is why we need to make sure when we're peeling our heat transfer vinyl that we do it slowly so we don't rip anything. Okay, there we go. So I will put this back in the parchment and run that one more time just to make sure everything's completely down. All right, and now we'll turn that off, set that aside. And you may notice that I missed getting this lined up. That's okay. We will go ahead and run a little bit of the pink. Well, the pink will be fine. Um, the green on the stem, because I didn't color the stem at all, I'll run that along the edge there just to add a little bit of color there so when we do this it will look intentional okay all right now let's work some more on our flower get that out get my teflon sheet back in I'm going to go ahead and finish filling in the pink with the RV63. Now this will add an extra little bit of shading, which is nice. But then we're going to go in with a darker color and add even more. All right, now we will bring in the RV66, which is a beautiful, deeper shade. And we're just going to do some flicking. And by flicking, we're just going to put the nib down and flick it up. All right, and then let's just go over just a little bit with the lighter color, just to kind of blend those flicks in just a little bit. And again, I'm just I'm just continuing with the flicking motion. All right, and our flower petals are done. And now we will take our E19 and color in the middle. This is a nice deep color. To add a little bit of something in there, let's go ahead and take our Copic Multiliner and we'll just put in a few little dots. And this will sort of mimic what the design was supposed to be. Okay, that's that. And now all we need is a little bit of the G28 on the leaves. Now this won't take much because they are really small. So we'll just put a little from the top, turn it around, 
and do just a little bit from the very tip. And then, of course, we'll bring our lighter color back in and just blend that in. All righty. And our heat transfer and cardstock flower is now finished. Isn't that pretty? I really love how this works. Okay, let's go ahead and get this card put together. So what I have here with me is I have a piece of black 110 pound Recollections cardstock. We're going to use this for our card base. And then I have a piece of white cardstock that I'm going to put on the inside. This is so I can write my message. Um, I am using score tape to put this inside. So we'll just get this lined up. Okay, there's the inside. Give that another score. My card mat is something I pulled out of my little tin. Um, that was embossed with this beveled diamonds 3D embossing folder by Spellbinders. It is really pretty. I, I'm not sure if you can pick up the different angles that the light hits that. But it is very pretty. Um, because it is so dimensional, I do have quite a bit of score tape on here. Probably more than I need. But, you know... Ask anyone who receives a Christmas present from me how much tape I use to tape up their package. They will probably say, way too much. All right, so I want that part at the bottom. So let's go ahead and line this up. Get that put down. And for our little flower, I have score tape on here, but I'm also going to use a little bit of art glitter glue to help that hold. I'm using quarter inch and eighth inch. And then I'll just put a little bit of art glitter glue on here as well just to make sure it holds down nice and tight so let's just put that right about there now the good thing about using art glitter glue or any wet glue when you're also using a tape adhesive is it gives you a little bit of time to move things around. Um, if I had just used the score tape, then as soon as I put it down, that that's it. Um, but with the wet adhesive, I was able to move it around just a little bit. Uh, my happy birthday sentiment is from my favorite sentiment stamp set. It's a Kaiser Craft occasion set. Um, I white embossed this, I white heat embossed this with Ranger white embossing powder. And again, I have a piece of score tape on here. I do have two extra pieces of cardstock glued on here to give it just a little bit of dimension and strength. Now, well, let's put a little bit of art glitter glue on here so I have time to move it around. Make sure it goes on right side up. That looks about right. So we'll just hold that down.
And there we have our finished card. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. If you like this card, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Have a great day, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.